Howdy! Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, this year, this is just kind of a, a wrap up of 2023. If I seem off, it's because I've talked about at least two of these things now, and I realized it wasn't recording correctly. So we're gonna take we're gonna we're taking another spin. I just want to do the same thing I did last year, which was like a wrap up of the year prior to the media and games I played and watched. Just kind of give my thoughts on it. Kind of give a, a year the end of the year wrap up. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that. Also, I'm recording this with a with a with a MacBook, <laughs> so um, we're we're working around some limitations I said in the previous update video, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Playing a little loosey goosey with this one. I don't feel like sitting. I want to stand. Put I got I got a sock around the microphone for a pop filter. Hopefully the plosives and the tss and that it will sound okay. So yeah, we're just gonna go into it with uh, with movies. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't watch a whole lot of movies this year. Uh, on my list, there are uh, two movies that came out this year that I watched. Um, I, I don't know what happened. I kind of just got like a, a vitriolic hate for Hollywood this year. I, you know, it's just one of those phases you go in. And, uh, I don't know. It was just one of those things where it's just like I kind of just, I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling like watching movies. I, I don't know. It just happens sometimes. But what I did watch was just some stuff that either came out a couple years ago or, you know, whatever, or just franchises I wanted to watch either again or to begin with just stuff so we're gonna talk about it uh so number one on this list is psycho gorman for some background uh every year me and the boys registered trademark do not steal uh get together for halloween and uh we get uh hilariously blackout drunk and watch bad horror movies usually i am the one who puts together the list of horror movies because i have quite the eye for diarrhea this year consisted of aquas uh, this name sucks. This year consisted of Aqua Slash, Abominable, the Sci-Fi Channel original movie, which wasn't actually that bad. Or I was too drunk to realize it was bad. I don't remember. I didn't hate it. Anyway, uh, Demons at the Door, which was um, an insane clown posse musically scored horror movie. Uh-huh. Shockma, about a, a monkey that kills people in a lab. It's a baboon. <laughs> the movie that started the night was Psycho Gorman. Uh, Psycho Gorman is basically if E.T. was violent. Uh, Psycho Gorman is just an alien that comes down and uh, it's just the same plot of E.T. where he makes friends with kids, not really... In this case, not really because he wants to, but because the, the little girl character basically has this power over him and he can't tell her no. She, it, it, it is just... It is just like, what if E.T. was just br just gory? Um, uh, honestly, it's, it's a hard movie to recommend because it's one of those movies where you just kind of can watch a trailer and tell if you'd be into it or not. I thought it was fun. Uh, I, that's not great, but I thought it was fun and uh, a good, a good goofy start to uh, Halloween night. Uh, just give if you're, it, if it sounds interesting with my garbage description, just watch a trailer and you'll kind of know if you're into it or not. Uh, it's one of those. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, the Diary of a Wimpy Kid trilogy. And yeah, I said trilogy. There's not a fourth movie. I feel like these hold up, but I don't know because I watched as a child the first and the third one and my wife had only seen the first one and the second one, I think? I, I can't remember. Uh, basically, we just wanted to watch them all and, and actually, like, see <laughs> how the movies are. Because I remembered the first one be do being just cringe comedy at its best, and yeah, uh, I think it holds up in that regard. The third one is probably the weakest, and the second one is probably the, the better, the best one, and that's solely down to just Roderick being the best character. But yeah, the Diary of Wimpy Kid movies hold up. Uh, the Disney Plus slop that they're putting out, I don't count, and there was never a fourth movie. That didn't happen. The next series of films I want to put on here is, uh, <sighs> in order for my wife to watch Akira, which she hated, by the way, I know, divorce, in order to watch Akira, uh, my wife made me watch all four, <laughs> five, all five Twilight movies. Uh, in a weekend and boy that was an experience here's the rundown on, on all of them from uh, base memory from like six months ago first one garbage absolute travesty can't I don't even know how th th it caught on as a movie uh, every subsequent movie after that feels about the same uh, just okay it just mediocre at best uh, at worst below average and, and then breaking down part two is just like <laughs> I don't know it as a movie, it's probably bad, but as the finale to this awful series, I, I had a good time with it. Um, still was like a six at most, but it was it was okay. Would I recommend doing that? No. No. 
kind of in the same vein. I'm just going to throw these on here, too. Uh, I also watched all of the Hunger Games movies to my wife's request, to which uh, kind of the same rules apply, except in reverse to Twilight. I thought the first one was awful. Uh, I thought that movie sucked. I I never really liked Hunger Games as a concept. I read the first book, and it just didn't, it didn't click with me. I didn't care. Uh, and I thought the first movie was bad. I thought the second one, which is Catching Fire... I'm not looking this up. If I'm wrong, I don't care. Uh, I thought that one was the best one. And then the other two, whatever the hell they're called, Mockingjay, sure. Um, didn't didn't feel one way or the other. Pretty right in the middle. Uh, they were fine. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> one of the big beefy boys that I did uh, over one weekend, a Friday into Saturday, as I watched every single Saw movie uh, besides Jigsaw and... Uh, spiral because those don't count. I watch Saw 1 through 3 on Friday, I watch Saw 4 through 6 on Saturday, and I finished the weekend off with Saw 7 uh, on Sunday. Um, what did I think and why did I do this? I don't, I can't answer you why, but what did I think of all of them? Man, the Saw franchise is weird. I like the first one like everyone else does. The second one I think was really good also. The third one kind of let me down. It was it felt like too much was happening, but also nothing was happening. The fourth one felt like a good start to a new trilogy. I remember the fifth one having the best, like, cop detective story. And then I would just kind of keep forgetting that there's a Saw movie happening. Uh, the traps in that one sucked. Um, but, like, the detective shit was interesting, and I kept getting invested in that. And then we'd go back to the traps, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is a Saw movie, isn't it? I kind of forgot. Sixth one's just the best one. And the seventh one I liked, I just kind of hate the 3D gimmick because the blood looks like uh, pink lemonade, uh, so that it would pop better in 3D, and when you don't watch it in 3D, boy, they're just bleeding pink. But the Saw franchise was good. I watched, I think I watched them more or less in anticipation to watch Saw 10, or X, or whatever it's called that, that just released uh, this year. Still haven't watched it, I'm waiting for it to get on some streaming service, I think it might be on Peacock now, which... Like to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, I I have. I didn't cancel the script subscription yet because it was like a $2 a month deal. So I was like, okay, so I'll wait around for that. But, amazing segue, holy. In tandem with buying a subscription to uh, a Peacock for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, around that time, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie hit Peacock. And I said, I have bare basic knowledge of Five Nights at Freddy's. I know some of the lore from the first to like, part of the third game why not um as a movie as a film kind of bad not great uh as a, a a five nights at freddy's movie where the audience is expected to know a bit of the lore going into it i thought it was okay uh i thought it was a pretty fun movie not scary <laughs> in the slightest uh, a horror movie that kind of forgot to be horror um but uh, I thought it was okay. I think if you're a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's, you've got nothing to lose. Give it a shot. I think you'll enjoy it. If you aren't a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's, however, uh, you can avoid it. You don't have to watch it. It's okay. Um, you're not missing out on anything. And then finally, the last movie I want to talk about was my first time back to a movie theater in two years. Uh, Godzilla Minus One came out, and uh, I went opening day. That shit hit... United States theaters. I uh, I had a tradition, kind of, sorta, with uh, one of my friends where I, I brought him along to see Shin Godzilla when that came out in theaters in 2016, and we had a great time with that. That was probably like my second favorite Godzilla movie at the time when it came out because it was just it was so good. I still really like Shin Godzilla, and I made it so that even though I moved quite the distance away, I picked, I made sure in advance and told him like, hey, this day you're coming to me and we're going to go watch Godzilla um taking a sip of my drink hold on I also roped in another friend who had no idea that it was a new movie because it started and he was kind of shocked that uh it looked as good as it did because he had no idea it was a new movie he thought they were just re-releasing one of the old Godzilla movies in theaters so he was quite <laughs> in for quite the shock but um man that movie was an experience I I haven't seen it since then I haven't stopped thinking about it since then uh, I'm a, a big, a big Godzilla nut. You, uh, Godzilla, fuck you could call me. Um, I grew up watching a lot of the movies from like age ten to now. Uh, I own most of them. There's only like seven movies that I'm missing, like just on my shelf. Minus one 
was probably everything I've ever wanted a Godzilla movie to be. Um, past the first movie, because that first movie, that first movie just has a tone to it that's just so palpable and just gut wrenching. Uh, and this, sixty years later, we finally got a movie that I feel like is a good, almost sequel to it with like its tone and how depressive it is and just. It did something that I've never seen another Godzilla movie do before ever, which was uh, make me give a shit about the human characters. When there there's so much that happens in that movie with the human characters, and I was worried that I wouldn't care, but I was fucking crying in the theater, and I've never fucking done that to human characters in a Godzilla movie. The last time with Shin Godzilla, I also cried in the theater, but that was when Godzilla did his big purple flame breath at night and just Tokyo was just in engulfed in flames and it was beautiful destruction. I, I felt a tear just streak down my face. It was great. I also hated the 2014 Godzilla movie at the time, so seeing Shin Godzilla be like an actual threat was awesome. Man, Minus One was so good. That, it, it is a Godzilla movie I can recommend wholeheartedly to somebody who doesn't even give a shit about Godzilla. It is immaculate i b best movie of the year even though i've only seen two movies from this year that being five nights at freddy's and this so take that for what it is so let's move on to games some of these will kind of be able to go through quick some i have some story attached to so but let's start this up with one that i i want to talk about a little bit at length which is the legend of zelda tears of the kingdom Tears of the Kingdom is weird for me. Holy fuck, I dropped the microphone. Oh, Jesus Christ. Tears of the Kingdom is a strange one for me. Because on one hand, I think everything that it does with its new abilities and or, or like new game mechanics and all of that are ingenious and probably contender for one of like the best open world games ever made. Again, just like Breath of the Wild when that came out. And uh, I think the game is, isn't is perfect, but mechanically for what it wants to do as an open world game, I think it, it, it I think this is probably as good <laughs> as we've gotten so far. However, something feels off or missing to me and I, I can't explain what it is. The closest I've been able to get to is I think, I think because when the Switch came out and Breath of the Wild was like the only thing you had and I had a Wii U, so I lived through the Wii U generation of just nothing, and every E3 and every Direct, watching them talk about Zelda Wii U at the time, and what it could potentially be, and what they're hoping for it to be, and waiting so long, what it felt like, for this game to come out, and then when it finally came out with a whole new system, with a whole new gimmick of being a portable console that I can play Zelda while taking a sh**, awesome. Uh, there was just something about that time, and the, 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 the year it came out was the year I also graduated high school, so it was that weird summer in between, you're an adult now, but you still don't really know what you're doing, and the sense of discovery in Zelda, Breath of the Wild specifically, I think kind of just helped motivate in a weird sort of way to just try and discover for myself what I want to do, and you know, whatever. I, I don't know how to explain it. Breath of the Wild, to me will always hold a, a special place as a perfect game in my eyes. Um, mechanically, is it perfect? Nah, the menus are an issue, like the UI and going through. Your inventory kind of sucks, and the shrines all kind of look the same. And, and There's issues, but to me, those issues don't really matter because I think what it did for me personally was way more important than any nitpick or flaw about the game uh, could do to my opinion on it kind of like dark souls where like the last the the second half of dark souls kind of starts to teeter off and i just don't care i think that's the best game ever made because of what it it means to me as a person tears of the kingdom however i i knew it wasn't gonna be that i knew it wasn't gonna feel like that and yet i still felt let down a little bit which sucks because i i did really enjoy my time with it i played it for 80 hours i think i played it for longer than my first playthrough of elden ring and i felt like elden ring was more impactful to me um but I didn't hate it. I loved it. I loved like every minute of it. Besides like the, the cursed 
it, whatever it is, the, the goop that gets on you that eats your hearts in the underground, going to Ganon for the final boss fight that I just didn't know that was going to happen and I had to go leave and make new food and then come all the way back down and go through the car. That sucked. Other than that, people who played it vaguely know what I'm talking about. It's fine. I don't know. I I loved it, but I also felt really disappointed by it. And I, I can't quite put into words why. Um, I think it's just new console, new shiny thing for Breath of the Wild really helped and where I was in my life. But Tears of the Kingdom came out, what, 2017, 2013, or 2023? So, like, what, six years later? And I don't know, I'm at a, I'm at a whole different stage of my life now. I'm, I've moved away from my hometown. I have kids. I have a wife. Like, I, my life is different now. And I feel like it just didn't hit the same as Breath of the Wild did at that time in my life. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's one of those things where later on in life I'll look back on it or play it again and it'll it'll do what Breath of the Wild did for me then. But for right now, it's a good game. It's a great game. It's a gr amazing game. If you have a Switch, you, can, you owe it to yourself to play it. But I don't know. For me, it just kind of felt like something was missing. And I can't quite explain it. Next game to talk about is Spider-Man 2 for the PS5. Uh, it's good. <laughs> I don't have much to say. Uh, I think the story in Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man Miles Morales was better. Uh, I wish Venom lasted a little longer than he did, but that's everyone's complaint. Yeah, it's good. I don't know what to say about it. Um, it's a it's a first-party Sony PlayStation 5 story-based open-world Spider-Guy game. What more do you want, dude? I don't know. Two Spider-Men for the price of one. During the Steam winter sale, my friend bought me... Uh, Chicken Little on Steam, because apparently Chicken Little is still on Steam. Disney, did you kind of forget about it, or like, what the... It didn't work on my Windows 10 computer, so I had to emulate the GameCube version, and I played the entire thing in one night for the Discord. I retroactively rebranded the Discord as a Chicken Little fan server, and boy, that f***ing game, dude. I... I have nothing to say about it. It is just a it is a kids platformer that just gets weirdly hard at the end, and the end goes on for way too long. And uh, that last level was like 40 minutes. It's it's fine. Uh, I don't have anything to say about it. I just thought it was funny that that game's still on Steam and retroactively our Discord has become a chicken little fan server. Hey, what can you do? All right, I'm gonna get into some of the Resident Evil games. So I pl I finished. The RE2 remake, I started it last year, kind of stopped after Leon's camp campaign, I finished Claire's. Great remake, honestly. It, what, what The issue with these is I'm not going to have a whole lot to say about them, that hasn't already been said. It's a great remake, it's a great Resident Evil game. I th th uh, uh, The RE4 remake, that's a good remake, a good Resident Evil game, the original is better. Everything gameplay-wise that the remake does is ten times better than the original, but just that that lightning in a bottle charm of that original Resident Evil 4 just will never be matched. Uh, it's impossible to remake that and make it not feel forced, which they did a good job with, um, but that, that that camp of the original RE4 is so sorely missed in the remake. But uh, it's good. I liked it. Um, play the original. <laughs> and then I also have Resident Evil 7, which I have been on record, don't know if on the internet, but at least to my friends, as saying that RE7 is a uh, useless fucking stupid piece of shit dumb fart game um and I, I i didn't like it uh and most of that came down to i didn't like how slow it felt to control and i just fucking hate ethan as a character i can't stand him uh and i don't think that that's anything new i i think the consensus is most people don't like ethan and uh yeah he sucks i think another issue is i, was, I always tried to play the game in vr but it always made me sick and that just didn't help opinions but uh, i finally played through it and what do i think uh, it's okay I think 8's definitely better. Uh, RE8 is really good. Um, very fun. But uh, 7... 7 feels like Capcom basically being like, we are sorry for how Resident Evil 6 turned out. Here is uh, a bare basic horror game. And uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and uh, it does a good job at that. That's all I really have to say about that. After my Resident Evil kick, uh, I played Alan Wake for the first time. And uh, Alan, Wake, Alan Wake was awesome. <laughs> that game was so good. I I need to play the sequel still. It's on my list. I'm kind of just waiting for a sale for it. But Alan Wake was so much fun. It is like such a weird mind of a story. It's kind of a Twin Peaks kind of feel. I, I adored Alan Wake uh, so much. And I can't wait to play the sequel. I'm definitely going to play it this year at some point. Um, but Alan Wake was so good. I also beat Sekiro finally. I did it after... 
what, three years from that Dark Souls tier list video coming out? Three, four years? I finally beat Sekiro. What do I th I think it's fucking awesome. <laughs> Sekiro was really good. I keep thinking about going back to replay it. But I'm busy doing other things, so I can't right now. But god damn it, Sekiro was so good. It was, it, it literally just came down to just like throwing myself at the wall over and over again until I got that parry system right. Because not being able to rely on dodges really fucked me up for a bit. Man, Sekiro was so good. I hard recommend if you, if for whatever reason you haven't played it yet. So something funny I did this year and last year is uh, because Nintendo shut down the eShops, I took it upon myself to do my civic duty of hacking and modding my 3DS and Wii U. And now I can finally play video games on it without spending a ton of money on aftermarket prices. And what is one of the first things I played on it? Donkey Kong Country Returns, because I never fucking played it, and I love Donkey Kong. And it's so good! Donkey Kong Country Returns is one of the best 2D platformers I've ever played. I loved it so much. Um, I want it to get an HD port to the Switch so bad I will buy that on day- I will buy that day one. Because the Wii version makes you shake the Wii Remote, which kinda sucks, and the 3DS one looks a little worse and runs a little slower than the Wii one. So just give us the 3DS version on the Wii- on the Switch, and it'll be fine. Make it look pretty. And it'll be great. It'll sell, like, at least one copy, because I'll fucking buy it. It's worth it, Nintendo. <laughs> Same rules apply for Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I'm currently in the process of playing that, but there's one game that's gotten in my way, which I'll talk about very soon. But I've beaten the first two, three, two and a half worlds in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Also, superb. Amazing. Well, I, I don't know how they do it. How do they make these dang, how do they make these funny monkey games? This is fucking good. I don't get it. But uh, the, the game that I have been playing, like, every day <laughs> uh non-stop is uh a game that i should not align with i don't really like turn-based rpgs that much i don't really care about fire emblem i like persona as a concept but shin megami tensei i it's it's fine it doesn't interest me japanese pop idols who tokyo mirage session sharp f e on the wii u is really good <laughs> i can't tell you what about it has made me like it as much as I do, but I have not been able to stop playing it. I'm almost done with it. I'm at, like, the end of the game, and it is so much fun. It's so stupid. It's so goofy. It plays its story. It plays itself entirely straight and doesn't ever point at you and just basically wink and nod and go, isn't this stupid? Like, it knows it's dumb, and it plays it entirely straight, and it is so fun. I... It's got me interested in playing a Fire Emblem. I know it doesn't play like a Fire Emblem, but you know what? I, fuck it, right? So I have Awakening and uh, Echoes installed on my 3DS that I will play at some point. But Tokyo Mirage, Sh to Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE is really good, and I want to own it for the Switch just so I have a copy of it somewhere. But finding an aftermarket copy is expensive, and <laughs> sucks because I think only like three people in the world can bought a Switch copy, so that bunk. Last two games I'm going to talk about are both Pokemon related. I finally played Pokemon Legends Arceus again for the first time after kind of calling it okay. It clicked. It finally f***ing clicked. I think it's a great step in the right direction for the Pokemon franchise to do something interesting like this and different. I thought it was really good. Uh, I'm working on completing the Pokedex because I want Arceus, goddammit. But I had to take a break and oh, during that break I decided to play Tokyo Mirage Sets and Shark Peppy. I don't know about the But I think it's a really fun an interesting new take, a new spin on, like, a Pokemon game. Um, if it didn't click with you, give it a, a year and try it again, because it kind of worked for me that way. I don't know, I just, I, it's just all headspace kind of things for me, I think. I think I just had to be in the right mood for it, and finally I was, and it worked. And lastly, is back to Pokemon. I completed the Pokemon Violet Pokedex. Don't really have anything else to say. I just, it's just the first Pokemon game that I finally completed the Pokedex because I liked it enough to give a sh to actually finish it. Did I buy the DLC yet? What do you think I am? How little do you think of me? No, I didn't fucking buy it yet because it's thirty dollars, and I just don't. I can't. I can't rationalize spending thirty dollars on one thing. I gotta wait for sale so I can buy a multitude of shitty things for thirty dollars. Come on! And the last thing that we're gonna be jumping into is probably the thing that took over most of me and my wife's life this year, which was uh, anime. <laughs> God, we're pathetic. I want to mention straight off the bat that I watched Evangelion this year. I started the year off strong with Evangelion in fucking January. I liked Evangelion. <laughs> I, I liked it. I thought it was good. thought it was confusing, which is good. Uh, thought it was very interesting. I, 
I don't have much to say about it. I think it's a great allegory for mental illness and depression. Uh, but if that's not what you got out of it, then that's cool because a bunch of other people get other things out of it. I think Shinji is a great main character. Yeah, I'm including what he does in the movie. It's not right. But God damn it. Knowing where his headspace is, I can understand why he snap a little bit. But not trying to justify. God, this makes me sound bad. I think Shinji's a good main character. God damn it. But uh, Evangelion is really good. You kind of have to be in the mood for it, though, because <laughs> it's, it's not it is not at all what you think it's going to be. Um, and I know it's been out for like, what, almost three decades now? There's still gonna be people who don't know what it is and try to watch it because they think it's just gonna be a standard mecha anime, and it's not. <laughs> but it's very good. My wife and I, a lot of these are gonna be my wife and I watched because I have been watching one thing over this entire year, and I'll get into it, but uh, me and my wife have been watching, or and not have been, had watched, Jesus Christ, Bungo Stray Dogs. We watched all of it. Uh, including Dead Apple, the movie, and uh, the, the newest season that I think just wrapped up this year. I'm not entirely sure. Bungo is very good. It's a it's a detective series where everyone's kind of got special powers to help them with their detective things and also fight. It's really good. I don't know how well else to describe it. Um, if it's if that bare bones thing sounds interesting, go for it. The the Dead Apple movie I'm just throwing on here is kind of non-canon, kind of canon. Um, it's one. Of, it, it sits in the, the weird gray era I, area. I think, I think the mangaka is adapting Dead Apple into the manga, so that it is canon. I I think I don't know. Uh, all I know is the the anime caught up and then some to the manga, but the guy told them how the series is gonna go. So we're gonna have to wait like 17 years for the next season. But that's okay because it's really good, um, and you should check it out. Maybe if it sounds interesting. Next thing I'll throw on here is uh finally after 10 years of sticking with it and it being basically my first anime that I ever really got into, uh, I got to see how Attack on Titan ends, and uh, I got a lot of thoughts on it, but I don't really want to spoil anything. So I'll just say I liked it. I think there are things about it that, it kind of did everything I thought, emotionally wise, it kind of did everything that I thought I would feel, where everything leading up to the ending I was gonna be super into, and then once we finally got, like, the main payoff, I guess, I kind of just felt a little empty. Now, was that because what they said, what, what like, what the reasoning for the event happening, uh, was it because it's not a good reasoning? I don't think so. I think it's just because it, it hits where, it hit me where it's like, oh, I was in fucking, what, I was 14 when it came out, so I was in like 10th grade I think when it came out and uh this has kind of just been around for me or around me for like 10 years now and uh it's it's over so I, I don't know if it was one of those things where it was just kind of like wow it's it's over huh or if it was kind of just deflating resolution I don't know um I think my major 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 complaint about the ending for sure is Kind of spoiler, I, I guess. I'm not really going to mention anything important, so just bear with me. Um, if you don't want to hear it, just plug your ears for the next 30 seconds. At the end of the credits, where it kind of shows like what happens afterwards, I think that went on for too long and really felt deflating. Um, I really did not like what they did there. Uh, everything else leading up to it, though, was either superb or writing the line of great. Um, great to good. It... It was good. I'm I'm satisfied with how it ended. Uh, I don't really. I, I'm satisfied with how it ended. I can kind of see where people are upset by it, but I also can't. Like, just get over it. It ended. Sorry, it didn't end the way you wanted it to, but it's still a satisfying ending. It's not like Soul Leader with a friendship punch to save the fucking goddamn world or whatever. It ended. It ended satisfactory. Satisfactory. I don't know. I thought it was fine. Anywho, that's the Attack on Titan rant. The next, the next, uh, the next rant to get made fun of. Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I like it. I don't quite get all the, all the hype. Like, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm not head over heels for it like a lot of other people are. I think it's really good. And I thought it was because I just wasn't understanding how the power systems work or the characters' motivations. But every time I've asked questions to friends who do get it uh, about it, Everything they explained to me is is stuff that I got. I understood. I didn't miss anything. It's just I just I don't I'm missing 
I'm missing what's making people freak out about it so much. I will say I read Zero and One, the manga volumes, before watching Zero and the first couple episodes that Volume One, or that the the that adapts the Volume One. Whew. And uh, I loved Zero. I loved reading Zero. The experience of reading Zero, Zero was great. I also really liked the movie. And weirdly enough, those first couple episodes adapting Volume 1 I thought were really good. After that, everything kind of started to taper off for me. So I'm kind of wondering if it's one of those shows where I just kind of have to read it and then see how they adapt it, and then it'll hit. I don't know. I call that small baby b baby goober brain. And, uh, well, I'll see. Um, but I, I, I plan to rewatch it at some point. Because I'm just not, I'm not getting, I'm not getting the hype. The show is gorgeous. It's animated phenomenally. <laughs> it's animated phenomenally. Uh, the animators at Mappa really need a break, dude. Just give them, just can't let them go home and pet their dog or something. But it, their work paid off. It looks phenomenal. And, uh, I don't know. Story-wise, I just kind of think it's okay. And I hate that. I, I want to get it. So I'm going to try to get it. But, uh. Same rule kind of applies for Demon Slayer, honestly. I don't have Demon Slayer on the list, but I'm throwing it here. The fourth season of Demon Slayer, or like the, the Hashira training village, the Hashira arc, what the hell it ever was, Swordsmith Village, that's it. That sucked. That was bad. I hated every... <laughs> me and my wife hated every minute of that arc. Pretty to look at. Animation was gorgeous, as usual. But man, how long can you keep pushing amazing and vi vibrant and beautiful animation before people start to realize, hey, this story's kind of nothing. The Swordsmith Village <laughs> was nothing. It looked pretty, nothing. It felt so much like filler, yet it wasn't, and yet I feel like the the power, uh, the power struggle. Hi, it's me. I'm editing, uh, currently. Uh, what the dumbass on screen's trying to say is power scaling. I couldn't think of the word at the time. It's power scaling. <laughs> or, like, the power differences in the major villains and then like the characters which just didn't make any fucking sense because it's like entertainment village you have the hashra that like just about dies beating one i can't remember what they're called now i don't care but beating one of the like big boss people and then swordsmith village is against two of them and there's one hashra there and they manage to beat two of them and nobody dies and nobody is close to death and it's like <sighs> They didn't get that strong between, like, there wasn't a whole lot of time between Entertainment District and this for, like, training. Like, at least when Dragon Ball pulls that sh there's at least, like, a time skip where it's like, oh, yeah, they probably just got stronger in that time skip. It was, like, three months. Like, yeah, you can do a lot in three months, but, like, what the fuck? It just, it, it felt too much like a jump. It felt like nothing. It felt like nothing was earned. Anyway, this is about things I like. Demon Slayer was not one of those. Demon, uh, season... In four Swordsmith Village or whatever the hell it is, I don't care. That was like a four out of ten. So during my during my watching of a show that I watched the whole year that I'm looking very forward to talking to or talking about, um, I took a break and I watched Trigun, the original series, and I watched Trigun Stampede. Trigun is uh, quite the vibe. I love the anime or the '90s anime look of everything. I love '90s anime in general. The like style is so. 90s anime. I don't know how to describe it. It looks great, and I love it. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Did you like that? Gun, the original series is kind of slow, and uh, you kind of have to be also in a mood for it. Not the same mood for Evangelion, but at least like a, a sit-back kind of chill mood, because it's very much like plot happens in the beginning, and then the middle's kind of just like, we're vibing, we're hanging out, it's a desert, it's a space western, and then like the last couple episodes is now the plot's kicking back in. And uh, I liked all of it, more or less. However, Stampede, <laughs> Stampede, I liked the whole thing a lot. Uh, I'd go as far to say is I like Stampede more than the original, and I know that's sacrilege, and I'm sorry, but I really liked Stampede a lot. I thought it was really good. I thought the way that it looked was beautiful. I think that's the new state. Like, if you're gonna do 3D in anime, copy Stampede. Stampede looks gorgeous. Uh, Stampede it was was so good, and it's it's such a short commitment. It's 12 episodes, and it's basically just like nonstop. It's like two episodes of kind of just like getting you used to how this world works and who Vash is as a character, and then after that, it's just like nonstop go, uh, which is is nice in comparison. Not saying that I'm not saying the original series is bad at all. I'm just saying in comparison that Stampede with its go 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 is much more briskly paced than the original. 
However, you're not wrong for preferring the original. I think the original is also really good. I just like Stampede a little more. I'm sorry. Next thing, ZOM 100. ZOM 100 I was super excited for when it got announced. Uh, I thought it looked really fun. I never read the manga because, <laughs> look at me, you think I read? But I never read the manga. Uh, I thought the trailers for it looked really good. And uh, I watched it as it was airing, which meant I watched episodes like 1 to 6 and then like 9. And then I waited months for episodes 10, 11, and 12 to come out on Christmas Day. And uh, you know what? It was worth it. Uh, I... I didn't expect to like Zom as much as I did. I thought it was just going to kind of be goofy zombie apocalypse. Let's just kind of have fun before we die. And it is that until it gets weirdly real at the end and sad. Um, and I, I wasn't expecting that and I really liked it a lot. Um, I would recommend it now that it's done and you no longer have to wait at least the first season. There's more manga to adapt, but at least for the first season it's done. And you don't have to wait months for just three episodes to come out on Christmas Day when the original series, when the series initially went on hiatus in like August. It's good. I would, I would recommend it. I don't think it's going to like blow anybody away. I think it looks really pretty. Yeah, no, I, re I recommend ZOM 100. I think it's really good. Okay, last year I talked about Blue Exorcist a bit. I'm going to talk about it a little bit now. And there are my opinions on Blue Exorcist. So when I talked about Blue Exorcist last year, I said that we watched season one, all of it. And then watched like the first episode of season two and were confused and I basically said that there needed to be like a, a full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood cut of Blue Exorcist. I don't really believe that anymore uh, because you put you got to put in just a little bit of work. However, if you watch season one up to a certain point and then start season two, it kind of just picks up. Season one has its own anime only ending, whereas season two continues to adapt the manga. Uh, from that specific episode in season one and then just kind of goes and it's Not the most elo eloquent way to do things. However, I think it more than makes up for it Season two of Blue Exorcist is very good and this isn't anything new. It came out 2017 However, I think it's really good and worth a watch because I think a lot of people didn't know that season two happened because season one kind of had like an ending and then if people did know that season two happened they were like me where they watched the first episode and they were like hey didn't we resolve all this shit? <laughs> but uh, but Blue Exorcist Season 2 is very good, and Season 3 is airing now. I haven't watched any of it yet. I'm a horrible person. I'll watch it at some point. Don't worry, guys. I'll get there. Right after I finish this one. Two more things, and then I finally get to just gush. Me and my wife, once again, she's entering the picture. Oh, Sorry, fellas. Brother, I'm married. We were looking through Funimation, and we found a little show called Link Click, and we thought it was going to be a, a, little, a little gay fellas doing some time travel shenanigans. When in reality, it was pain. It hurt. God damn. Link Click is a Chinese Billy Billy original show, which Billy Billy is basically China's YouTube, uh, from my knowledge. And it is an, uh, an original anime animation for Billy Billy. And it is about two friends, one with black hair and one with white hair, of course, that can... The black-haired one can go into the past through pictures, so he can go to that moment that the picture was taken. And the other one can kind of read the future from that picture so like what happened from when that picture was taken to like 12 hours into the future or something and through that they kind of work with each other to either get information or right some wrongs in the past that won't change the future or you know stuff like that and that's like the gist however it goes off the f***ing rails episode one is pain episode two is cute episode three is pain and it just doesn't Stop! Every episode hurts, and it's great! I loved it so much! Uh, it's got a killer opening as well. It's so good. Link Click is really good. Watch it. in Christ. And then the last thing I'll throw on here is that me and my wife, once again, God damn it, boys, the wife's in here all the time, I'm sorry. We're st we started Black Clover. Don't have a whole lot to say about it. It's fun so far. Uh, we're like 10, 11 episodes in, maybe less, I don't remember. But it's fun. It's goofy. Sue us, I don't know. Sometimes a basic shonen is what you need is good oh my god it's time it's it's finally fucking time last year in my uh recap i stated that i was going to commit to the gargantuan task of catching up to one piece through the anime i wasn't going to read the manga i wasn't skipping any of the filler i was going full on episode one of one piece to episode currently 1091 i think is how many are out while i did not catch up however i'm at 1036 so I'm almost there. I'm 1,036 episodes in, and One Piece is quickly, quickly becoming uh, 
one of my favorite pieces of media ever. Uh, yeah, I'll be one of those heads that everyone hates. I think it's great. I, I would recommend it hardcore to everyone, though I understand that the thousand plus episodes is daunting. After a while, you stop kind of counting episodes. And uh, once you get to a certain point, it doesn't even matter anymore because it's kind of funny that you'll be sitting in Dressrosa at like 600 plus episodes. And you're like, damn, I'm 600 episodes in and it doesn't even feel like it. Meanwhile, it's been a whole fucking year. I've been taking my time catching up to it. I wanted to take my time. I could have just binged a lot of it and caught up to it in less than a year or maybe even a year. But I wanted to take my time because I didn't want to rush it. Because once once I hit a certain point in the show, in the show and kind of got more involved with the uh, not insane fans, but the normal-ish fans, I could tell this was something special, and I wanted to take my time with it. And I did. And I, I'm i really happy that I did. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite... It's one of my favorite things that I've started, and I'm so happy that I did, and I plan to commit to it the whole way. I plan to catch up to the anime, and then from wherever the anime ended, I plan to catch up to the manga, and I'm going to read it weekly when it comes out, because god damn it, I want to know what the fucking One Piece is when everyone else dis d when everyone else reading the manga figures out what the One Piece is, and I want to find it out before I see it spoiled on Twitter. God damn it. <laughs> while it is over a thousand episodes, and while it is a huge commitment, oh my god, it's so good. It, the, the themes that it tackles, and tackles beautifully, it covers so many real world issues and does it so well that it doesn't even, it, it never feels like you're being preached to about it. It feels so important. I don't know. I can't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's such, and there are people who are brain dead who consistently say that there's no, there's no political undertones to One Piece and whatever. Hey, if that's what you think, I'm sorry. I'm smarter than you. You should feel bad. But because I'm a fucking idiot, and I picked up on it, but it's just, it's, it's so good, and it's, uh, god damn, One Piece is great, and, uh, this is like the least critical analysis of anything I've ever said, because it is just straight, just, I have so many emotions about it, and I don't know how to put them into words, just understand, just, please understand, One Piece is really good, <laughs> I can't, I, I cannot express enough how good it is, it's good enough to the point that uh, I, my friend Cole, who I made the Game Boy for, you remember Cole? Cole? He watched the live action and decided, fuck it, I'm gonna also commit to it. And he started also from episode one and has been watching it. And he is, I think, at the tail end of Fishman Island. And uh, he's been messaging me about it every so often. And he's also really enjoying it, which he didn't think he would. So it's, it's just one of those shows where you just kind of have to give it time, let it cook, get past a certain point, and you'll know if it's going to click for you or not, which is like 46 episodes in. Which sounds like a lot, but in the grand scheme of 1,091 episodes, it's not. Um, but yeah, just give it like 43 episodes. I think that's when All Along Park ends. And that's, that's kind of like, the, that's kinda like the, give, the give me. It's like, does this arc, does this arc like click with you or not? Because if it doesn't, you're probably not going to like One Piece, and that's okay. I still think you're missing out, but that's okay. I won't be mad. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. But, uh, but yeah, I think that's going to do it, honestly. I'm not going to continue to embarrass myself over fictional pirates anymore. But, uh, God, please watch it. Don't even, I'm not even going to say that. God, it's so good. I'm not even going to say please watch it. That's so pathetic. Just, it's so good. And, uh, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, I think. Uh, was anything really accomplished here? No, but I had fun. So, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next month, hopefully. Uh, I think me and my wife are going to do another, another ranking video, uh, probably of the anime that we've watched. But, uh, but yeah, uh, that's going to do it. Bye, bitches. Look at it. I held the mic the wrong orientation. I was supposed to hold it this way. Son of a bitch.